Welcome to Coffee, Eggs and Inspiration. It's a weekly show that goes out over YouTube and as a podcast over all of the major podcast channels. And each week I get to sit with an inspiring person and listen to them tell their story and share it with all of you. This week is no different. I'm here with Anton Hanley. Welcome, Anton. Thank you. Anton, uh, I would describe as the quintessential uh, entrepreneur. So came straight out of school and founded uh, the company that he uh, still leads. So he's the founder and group CEO of the, the lead agency, uh, 18 years in February. So it's a, uh, an amazing business with a, a long track record of success uh, that's still growing really, really strongly. Uh, based in Liverpool, started in Liverpool, that's the home base still, I think the uh, HQ, Global HQ, but also in London, uh, North America, uh, and some back office operations in, in places like Poland. Uh, Anton was uh, nominated in 2017 for uh, the NatWest Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. Uh, the, um, uh, the company that he leads, the lead, a lead agency, has been in various uh, top lists, including last year, for example, Deloitte's top 50 uh, growth technology businesses, uh, uh, an incredibly well-recognised uh, business uh, in the UK and abroad, increasingly. Anton and I actually met uh, in the gym, uh, so I know him <laughs> first and foremost as an incredible athlete and uh, he's much, much fitter than I am, for sure. Um, but lots of, uh, lots of events, there's always a big sort of marathon or half marathon or swimming across the sea uh, on the horizon for Anton. And uh, he's uh, invested a lot of uh, time and energy also in great social causes like mental health and uh, NSPCC. So, uh, really impressive track record. And I wanna start, if we could, by hearing what led to the founding of yeah. the lead agency, because that was uh, what got me hooked when we started talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, the background is um, my brother and father have always been in, in car rental, and um, I was 19 years old, and they they just they came back from a, from a holiday together, and they said, look, there's there's no um, website which enables us to to get competitive pricing on on vehicles we're looking to looking to buy to bring into the fleet. Um, and uh, I remember saying, look, there's, there's price runner, there's various sites, I'm sure they're going to move into to automotive, right? I'm not interested in getting involved in any, any kind of uh, scheme to, to do that. They, they, they persisted and they, they'd even come up with a domain name called askprice.com. Okay. Um, so I said... What year was this, by the way? Um, so I would have been 19, so that would have been like 2001, it comes 2002. Right. Um, and you know, in the end, they, they 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 wore me down. I said, look, I'll give it a go for summer uh, because I was going to be a mature student and in, in go in, 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 and get into a university somewhere. Um, and literally got into it uh, that that summer. Um, I think it was of two thousand and in in one when we we started, you know, kicking it off. And yeah, um, over over that time, um, me and a, and a great team were built. Uh, the largest new car lead generation business in in, in UK, um, you know, as you mentioned, expanding into North America, we're yeah. doing activity in Canada, and we're, we're doing more in in Europe as well as moving into other verticals and in, investing into other uh, tech startups. And that, and that was online, right? So it's absolutely hundred percent online. And in yeah. two thousand and one, if my history yeah. uh, serves me well. Um, everything was absolutely imploding at that time. It was the burst of the uh, the internet bubble yeah. to a certain extent. So that must have been a fairly courageous, you well, know, decision to. You know, though, no, because I didn't, I didn't know any. I had no other options really. Right. You know, it was possibly go to go to you know universities and mature student, which which you are at nineteen. Um, and you know, I, I had, I didn't have any other options, and and it was there was no real risk because there was nothing really to lose. Um, but it was so easy back then, you know. Ranking in Google was 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 a walk in the park, um, and, and we just were generating so many leads. Right. The problem we had had in the early days was was actually getting car dealerships to take the leads seriously because, right. because back then, you know, two thousand two, um, car dealerships were not that interested really in in communicating with consumers who wanted to inquire over the internet because it changed the whole kind of. You know, balance of power. You know, it, it put the put the power in, into the consumer's hands, and the yeah. dealer did not like to be ringing out. They wanted the, the footfall. To Absolutely, they wanted yeah. people to walk into the showroom. Right. Um, but obviously, you know, 
things changed. <laughs> Absolutely, they changed. And um, how did you think about? Uh, you, you mentioned getting the uh, the good rankings in the search. This is search engine opt optimization, so yeah. organic search results. Were yeah. you doing pay for yeah. uh, at this stage? It's uh, no, no, there was no, early, there was, there was no, there was yeah. no need at all to do any. No, no, we were inundated. That there was there were too many inquiries. When we originally launched the the, the first website, we were across multiple verticals. Um, but but believe it or not. Uh, automotive got traction in a subcategory called contract hiring and leasing yep. um, because they're used to um, transacting remotely. So with, if you're a car leasing broker in Glasgow and you've got a, a consumer in London, you know they send the docs, docs get signed, the vehicle gets delivered, it's, it's very straightforward. Right. Um, in that particular subcategory um, got traction. We, we, we were inundated with inquiries from consumers who right. wanted to buy cars or lease cars. The, the problem wasn't consumer engagement in, in volumes of traffic, it was trying to satisfy that with uh, the kind of dealers being on board. Right, okay. And the what was the business model at the time? Were, were dealers yeah. paying for the leads? Yeah, it was a monthly fee, so, the, so the, the, the leasing brokers, the dealers, they would, they would, they would pay a, a monthly fee um, to, to access um, as, as, as many leads as we could generate within right. a, a set of parameters set for them, which was normally around um, the type of vehicles they could sell, or postcodes, or or purchase times, uh, a variety of parameters they could they could pre-select. Right, right. So, okay, and um, and that was independent of the number of leads they got. So absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was. They were they were getting a good deal, but the value wasn't really associated in those very early days on on the, these web leads, apart from the, the leasing companies. Who, yeah, like I say, who who, who, who were interested. Right, and do. Did you uh, did you get funding for this, or was it all bootstrapped? Were you doing yeah. it? No, no, it was it was all bootstrapped. It was it was basically um, getting some some funding. I think we got some some funding from um, the yeah, local council, right? And you know the first office was in the back of a, uh, a car rental depot in Bootle. You, you probably don't know Bootle. I don't. It's a it's an area just outside Liverpool, which. Which isn't 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 a nice area, um, but it was fine. You know, it was a, it was a place to start, um, and uh, yeah, it, it was free. So you know, we we, we we used it. Have you ever got funding for it? External funding or uh, no? We, we council never program? never never had any any external funding. Incredible. So uh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. A, pretty unique actually. Yeah, very yeah, very unique indeed. indeed. Yeah. So it must have been a real sort of cash cash engine and this was uh, dealers in the Liverpool area at this time or was no, it? No, 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 it was immediately um, nationwide. Immediately nationwide. Yeah, absolutely because the, the consumer inquiries were coming from across the country. Sure, interesting. And how has it been, you know, you're a, Liv a Liverpudlian I think? Um, well, a, a, little, a little village, um, 20 miles outside of uh, Liverpool. So how would you how would you rate and talk about Liverpool as a place yeah, yeah, you know to yeah. do business and headquarter a global company? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, you know Liverpool's a fantastic city. You know, it's a beautiful city. You know, we're we're, we're very lucky. Um, we've 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 got a wonderful uh, you know waterfront, um, and it's uh, it, it's great for running certain divisions. It's a very creative city. We've got a we've got a very strong contact centre, um, and we've got the, the, there's a wealth of talent to, to fit in in, in there. Um, I know it's a it's it's a great community. We get a lot of support from the the, the council there. Yeah. Um, it's a very small business community, so so we work very well with that community. Um, last week we brought a professor over from Stanford um, Business School, and we put on a, an event. Um, he was Jonathan Labab, the the professor of marketing from, from Stanford Graduate School of Business, and we did a session where we brought in all the local businesses um, and just just shared with them. Some of the some of the, the methods up there that they're teaching at Stanford. Amazing! You must be a local hero. In I the won't area. say that. <laughs> that, but it went down really well. Yeah, it went down really really well. Well, shout out to uh, Liverpool Council and the Mayor of Liverpool. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they fully support us, and a couple of other um, sponsors support us. Brabner's local legal practice and RSM, yeah. which is great. Yeah, and you've expanded. Uh, obviously, you're now in, in London yeah. as well as yeah. North America. Tell yeah. us about that expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, um, Liverpool is is where we do all the, the development. We've got all the, the marketing. We've got all the data analysis. We've got the contact centre, quality control, finance functions. So uh, all all the, the majority of the operations are run from Liverpool. Right. Um, but in, in London, we have sales and account management because our clients, um, predominantly agencies, 
and a lot of the, the large automotive brands are all around uh, you know, London, so so it, it makes makes a lot of sense. So we just got an office on Tottenham Court Road, um, and then we like I said we were doing more in North America. Uh, so we got a little office in New York, which we share with um, some some other UK uh, ad tech companies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're, we're committed to international expansion, and we're just going through a program now to 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 enable that. Amazing. Well, so the second uh, biggest viewing audience for, for this channel is in the US. If somebody Excellent. wants to uh, to get hold of you and uh, work with the lead agency, how do they do that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I will. Am I right to provide you details and we yeah, can pin okay. it on the on We'll the, link it below. YouTube. We'll yeah, link it below, right? yeah. Right. We can link okay. it below and we can uh, do that on the uh, podcast Fantastic. as well. So put some links. Great. See below. Excellent. Down here. Excellent. Cool. So uh, let's let's move, move. Actually, before we move on, um, there must have been, I mean, it sounds like a, a rocket ship, right? That took off well uh, and flew well. Been, there must have been some hard times years, oh, during that period. <laughs> Talk about, like, what, what's been the most frightening or, you know, a uh, threatening thing that's that's happened during, yeah. during your period? Yeah, yeah well, 18 years in business, um, February 2020, you know, we've had a number of ups and downs over over that, that, that period. Um, funnily enough, the, the recession, which kicked in around 2007, that, that was, was, was a real kind of um, key moment for us in, in, in progressing right. because it enabled us to actually get more traction um, with, with the automotive manufacturers and dealers because at that point they needed to kind of change the way they thought and they, they allocated more budget right. to, to, to marketing activity which delivered kind of performance which is more accountable and because right. we, we charge on a cost per lead basis right. and you can actually work a uh, lead to sale yeah. kind of rate in, in there for what the ROI is, yeah. um, we, we actually saw more, more budget come our way. So paradoxically counter-cyclical in a way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. But, but yeah, the, the business has had a, a number of, of ups and downs over the years, but we've got a, we've got a very strong core team, like the, the CTO, um, Ed, has, has been with, with me uh, for, for over 11 years, uh, Chief Revenue Officer over 10 years, we've got a very strong core team. Yeah. And you know, we, we, we're comfortable with the fact, not comfortable, but we appreciate it, it can't always be good, it's yeah. not always going to be bad, you just got to deal with things that, that the best you can, but we've got a very, very strong team. We're consistently learning and bringing in great consultants, and putting the guys on great courses, we've got guys on MBAs, we're developing internally future leaders programs where we're continuously training. Yeah. But, you know, um, innovation's at the heart of the business. Yeah. Um, and we're continuously innovating. We we basically reinvest, you know, all the profits back into the business right. to, to to keep improving. You know, and and we, we, we just stay very much in, in, in touch with our, our clients and making make sure that they're, they're they're satisfied. Right. You know, if your clients are happy, yeah, you know, you you're normally pretty safe. You're normally pretty safe. So let's drill in on innovation actually, because innovation is really the lifeblood of any any company these days mm -hmm. and it's moving so quickly how do you create an environment where people feel um, at ease and free to think differently yeah yeah great question um, and you know I think we're still figuring that out um, but we we, we, we we have a lot of sessions where we will just bring the teams together and we'll put forward a client problem um, and we'll basically just just let them have half a day a day, kind of trying to trying trying to trying to figure it out. Brainstorming a bit. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, and you know, we're we're very keen to continuously ask our clients what challenges they've got. Right. And um, and they create your opportunities, and yeah. then we need to innovate around those. Yeah. Like we we had a, a client recently who turned around to us and said, look, you know, where we have you know, reviews on our products across the web. We, we want to be able to drive that traffic to specific pages or capture that information. So, you know, we, we, we got the teams together, we got guys from the, the engineering department, guys from the marketing department, data, and, you know, we, we, we quickly worked out that we're able to create a solution where we could contextually match um, against all their car reviews across the, 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 the web and serve in chatbots and to display adverts to be able to engage with the consumers and drive them to configurator pages and we moved that into a pilot 
and that that happened, you know, in a three-month window. Yeah. So we're 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 trying to empower the team. Um, you know, everyone says it, but but you know, we're happy to fail, and we're happy to fail fast, and we're happy to to, to learn from those failings and go again. Yeah. Um, you know, we 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 we're trying to get comfortable with truly embracing failure. Yeah. Um, and you know, we we we're doing a hard decent job. You know, we're we're. We're always innovating. We've created an ecosystem, a um, digital ecosystem in the business, and we know all the components, and we know where we need to innovate. And we we create our operating system, and you know, we just keep going at it. And, yeah. and we've got all the data. You know, the business is becoming a, a big data science project. Yeah. You know, we're, we're bringing on more data scientists than ever before. Right. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah we, we, we know what, what drives performance and we're able to monitor so we can see what's working and what's not. Well, so I must say this is a sort of really raw, gritty uh, masterclass in innovation. You've said a few things that have really jumped out. Um, asking your customers, uh, so you, you get feedback, uh, empowering the team, embracing failure, mm -hmm. um, moving quickly, so you talked about this sort of three-month cycle, testing and experimenting. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you were to write a textbook on innovation, I think you'd probably find all of those things and, yeah. and you were living it and breathing it. Um, obviously, it's working pretty well. Of course, we're better, but we're, you know, we're committed to continuously improve. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, listen, tell me about some of the uh, social causes. You, uh, it strikes me that you're really uh, heavily invested in doing stuff outside work as well to, yeah. get, to uh, contribute to the community. What's driving that? Yeah, yeah. so what, what's, what's really important as a business is to, to, to connect with charities um, which resonate with, with us um, and at the same time try and connect it with, with um, you know, physical fitness. Um, so we're really proud this year of, of putting on uh, a number of, of challenges throughout the year. So you know, we put on a fantastic event, which was London to Brighton, um, for, the, for the media industry and for the, the media industry charity uh, NABS. Um, so we raised over twenty-five thousand pounds for wow. NABS, um, and that came out of a year before we were doing a, a cycle uh, from London to Paris, and we were one of the media agency guys who, who were on that event, and we're talking about some of the, the mental health issues that he's experiencing within his organization and I was saying the same in my organization. So we, we, we talked about well how do we create a, a cycling event and, and find a mental health charity and, and involve the industry and we you know we ticked all those boxes. So next year we'll go again and we'll we'll aim to surpass the, the, the amount we've raised and we'll aim to Just surpass London to Brighton or Absolutely. Yeah. No, no we'll do we'll do London to, to Brighton and, and we'll just put on more events, you know, whether it be marathons or Ironman or, or, or whatever the challenge may be. Yeah. And you know, because we're really trying to weave into the business and it doesn't have to be getting everyone to do marathons, whether it be hiking or cycling or, yeah. or, or whatever it may be, because we believe there's an absolute connection um, to the, the healthier you are. Uh, uh, from a body perspective, a healthier mind. Well, that's, uh, I think you're living and breathing that. Uh, the few times that we've met at, at the gym, uh, we'd arrive and I'd, I'd sort of drive my car there for a 45 minute session. It's a high intensity training session, which I'm um, almost dead after. Um, and Anton, the times that I've seen him, has run there, done the class, and then run back. So, Chapeau, my friend, you, you, you're fitter than I am. Um, you talked a little bit about mental health, mm -hmm. uh, and I'd, I'd love to sort of talk a little bit more uh, deeply about that. Yeah. What's your experience with mental health in the workplace, mm -hmm. and what have you found to be uh, some good techniques to um, create a good environment? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, well, well, you know, using me as, as an example, you know, I, probably about two years ago, um, one of the, the team members said Look, we should do a, we should do a bike ride. We should cycle from our London office to our Liverpool office, um, and put on that event. And a number of us did it, and I did it. And it was a super tough event, and, and uh, I was three stone heavier by then. Um, and it was a real kind of turning point because it, it made me realise one that that I'd, I'd got out of shape over the years, in, in two that. Probably from a from a uh, you know work perspective, probably working too long hours. Um, it wasn't keeping in shape. wasn't wasn't probably in the right frame of mind to be as productive as possible. So that was a bit of a kickstarter to um, to to start training again. And it made me it, it really improved my 
mental health as a result of getting back into training. So, so, so you know, post that event, got back into training, and just felt a lot better um, yeah. mentally, physically, getting back into uh, 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 you know, a regimented kind so of training sharper, schedule. Sharper, more alert. 100%, you know, sleeping, yeah. better, sleeping better, working harder, um, you know, output was better. So you know, since then, just, just really tried to get the, the, the team at work um, to also follow, a, not, not the, the exact same program, but we put on all kinds of initiatives to, to, to get people out to, to do 5Ks, to do Tough Mudder, yeah. to, do, to do whatever they want. Yeah. Um, because you know, there's, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of anxiety out, out there. There's there's a lot of uh, especially some of the, the younger team members. There's 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 there's, there's a lot of mental health issues. Um, so so we we're, we're doing what we can connecting up with NABs because obviously they provide a whole host of, of, of support yeah. mechanisms. Yeah. You know they've got a great helpline. Um, so we make sure our team can, can use the helpline and want to support them yeah. by raising as much money for them because we think it's it's a really important charity. Well, so if you want to have huge fun, innovate, and be fit, uh, think about working yeah. for the lead agency. Right? Are you going to come on the, the the bike ride next year? Because you didn't come this year. Okay. Okay. Yes. There we go. I can. I can. That, 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 on camera. There, that, 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 there we go. That was. That was good. Can I do it on my Brompton? Because I've got a Brompton bike. We'd love you to do it on your Brompton. Yeah, I love the Brompton. I, I, I amazing. I couldn't get on there. I sold my race bike recently. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I think I've ridden that four oh. times. I like my little commuter bike. You raise a lot more money if we get you on Brompton. So that'd yeah. be that'd be great. They're good for the upper body, I find <laughs> as well. Not only do you ride them, but they're twelve oh, kilograms, yeah. and you have to carry them around from time to time. And oh, so you, sort of, you get the full so, body. So you're committed to doing it on your Brompton. Yeah, absolutely. I would, I, this is the only bike I've got, so yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. That is brilliant. Yeah, I won't be very fast, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's a speed test. So look, there's probably a, a number of people watching who uh, are maybe coming out of university or coming out of school, uh, thinking about what they do next. Mm -hmm. Maybe some who have been in jobs for some time, thinking about pivoting to the next thing. You're the quintessential entrepreneur, uh, certainly in my eyes. What advice would you have for them? Yeah. Yeah, um, I suppose the, the advice would be do your research, find something you're incredibly passionate about, and and try and get the the, the necessary support, whether that be a business partner or, or whatever funding is required. But then the key thing I find, and, and, and I see this in myself, it's just persistence. You know, if if you give it a go, give it a go. You know, and it's going to get hard, isn't it? It's going to get tough. But, but give it a go, commit to a period of time, whether that's 12 months, 24 months, and give it everything, give it absolutely everything. And, and it being tough and painful is, is, is part of the ride, isn't it? Absolutely, I guess so. Well, 18 years and counting, so mm -hmm. certainly a, a demonstration of persistence. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a real inspiration, certainly to me, and I think to many others. So Anton, really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Cheers.